I'm Big J, checking in from the road. Don't put me down, mother. Be positive. That sounds like Jason. <clears throat> Big J's coronavirus update. Where's the people, man? Nine fucking people? Ten? Am I on the right account? I'm on my main account, right? I'm not... This fucker should get to a hundred. I haven't been gone live in this account in fucking weeks. Jay, please don't go outside. You can get infected. Yeah, we're going to get into the coronavirus in a minute here. Just waiting for a few few more people to join. Who said you're not popular? What do you think of Trump handing out checks? Um, I don't want... I don't, let's start at the beginning with the coronavirus. I don't want to jump ahead. Her trend acetate is good for combating the virus. Hell yes. Dude, you, you shoot enough Tren, nothing else can live inside the human body. It'll kill off everything. Tren is fucking just a killer. The Genova virus, yeah, exactly. All right, people will start pouring in here. Here's the deal with this, this corona bullshit. It's a flu, okay? You're... You might get really sick, but most of you people, 80% of you, are going to get a little fever and just not feel very well. So this whole thing has gotten blown out of proportion. There's no cases anymore in, in Hunan, China. I just don't understand this nonsense. It's complete nonsense. I think we're really overreacting because... It doesn't seem to be killing anybody except for people over 65 and people um, with pre-existing conditions. Why are we tanking our economy and making, putting so many people out of work to protect the fucking elderly? Why don't we just quarantine the elderly? I don't know if you guys are aware, but Social Security is in trouble in the United States. You know, a little thinning of the herd of the fucking elderly wouldn't hurt. Could be a good thing if we lost a big population of our elderly. You know, there's something like, I, I don't want to get, I'll probably get this figure wrong, but there's something like $3 trillion in real estate that's locked up by retired people right now in the United States. And, and, and you know, there's, there's, there's kids and grandkids that the minute they inherit that shit, most people aren't going to go live in grandma's house. Um, some people might. Depends where it is, depends how nice it is, this and that. But most people are going to put that shit on the market and have money to spend. Old people don't do shit for the economy, especially this goddamn World War II generation. They hoard everything. A little cleansing of the fucking senior citizens would do this country damn good. I listened to Mike Pence today on public radio, and I think we're a couple days into this 15-day. Trump suggested a 15-day self-quarantine, and I believe that started what, yesterday or Sunday? I think our our federal government, I think, is smart enough to know that after 15 days of this nonsense, people are just going to, people are not going to willingly do it anymore. So I listened to Mike Pence today on, on public radio, and um, this reporter kept asking him, you know, are, is this 15-day voluntary quarantine going to be extended? He would not answer that question directly. He kept saying, we need people to abide by this 15-day then the reporter would try and ask it a different way, and he would give the, a, the same answer in a different way. You know, pre the president has suggested 15 days self-quarantine. We need everyone's cooperation. They cannot extend this past 15 days. People are going to goddamn revolt. And this isn't goddamn China, where the army can, you know, walk down the street with fucking, you know, AK-47s. Americans aren't going to put up with that shit. Fuck the quarantine. It's an excuse to enforce martial law. Yeah, but... That's not going to fly, man. Uh, imagine, um, I, that's why I don't think Trump's going to do it. Um, everything I've heard, and I listen to public, I listen to talk radio, both public radio and Fox News. I, I, if I can't get Fox News, I listen to um, public radio. So I hear both sides of the argument. Trump has been very, very careful to, to not indicate any kind of federal um, martial law. He, over and over, if you listen to Trump on this topic, he's going to always say he's going to leave it up to the governors and the mayors of this country. Because what's good for Seattle, San Francisco, Portland, Oregon, and New York City, you don't need that in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, or, or, or Wichita, Kansas, or, you know, Charlotte, North Carolina, home of Dale Chance. It's up to the governors and the mayors of, of these hot spots to enforce these fucking quarantines and curfews. It's not the job of the federal government 
to to enact a, a curfew or a quarantine. That's not what being an American is all about. That's up to the governors and the mayors. And if you don't like your governor or your mayor, you move. You know, you move to a different state or a different city. Yeah, Order 66, Mack Truck. Uh, this Mack Truck guy really crossed the line calling Joe a pedo. And he did it several times. It wasn't a slip of the tongue. And I don't know where he got that. Those of you guys that are that, that watch Muscle Sport Mag, watch Joe's Muscle Sport Mag post, Joe is into them older women, man. Take a look at some of those women that Joe has on the program. Most of them are over 30. Check out <laughs> most of Joe's sponsored athletes are uh, over 30. Joe, J no one sh can accuse Joe of robbing the cradle. If anything, Joe is the opposite. He likes them a little older, like on the creepy side, like chicks that have you know, gone over that 45-year-old mark where they start to not look so hot. Yeah, fuck this Mack Truck guy. You know, when Mack Truck punched Rich Piana, it's common knowledge I've never been a fan of P Rich Piana, and I, but I'm not going to trash a dead guy, so let's move on from that. But after Mack Truck punched Rich Piana, I did a video saying, you know, asking about the who's this Mack Truck guy. You know, I want to drink some 40s with him and smoke some fucking menthols. A bunch of people got their feelings hurt thinking I was making a racist comment. But those of you that know me know I wasn't being racist. That's really what I wanted to do. See, if you drink malt liquor and smoke menthols, it's not racist to say you want to drink malt liquor and smoke menthols with a black person. It's only racist to say shit like that if you don't do it. But I, I, I can back it up. So a bunch of do-gooders, I guess told Mack Truck that I said this shit, and, and, and Mack, Mack Truck Mack Truck had a good sense of humor about it. I, from what people told me, he said, no, man, that's that's funny, man. I, I think the guy's kind of funny. You know, he didn't say nothing racist. So Mack Truck has always been somewhat good in my book. You know, he didn't get offended when I, when I said, you know, you know, who is this guy that punched Rich Biana? I want to drink a 40 with him, smoke some fucking Newports. He thought it was funny, and you should think it's funny. Everyone stop getting your fucking feelings hurt. When did America become so pussy? You know, I thought it was a good move. You know, the guy didn't get his feelings hurt. He must have heard or somehow figured it out that, you know, I, I wasn't a Rich Piana fan. Uh, I'm not a fan of anybody that pumps them up, selves up with that synthol to look that stupid. Ugh. Rich Piana was like a cartoon character. It's stupid. So anyway, you know, I've been following Mack Truck for years. Two years, probably. Three years. I don't know how long that shit was, how long ago that was. Never had a problem with the guy. No problem. You know, he did his thing. Nothing he really did pissed me off. And then the, this clown, this little fat kid, I forget his name. Someone told me he's a pro bodybuilder. He looks like a little fat turd to me. He's interviewing him. And, and Mack Truck starts going off calling Joe a fucking pedo. No. You know, let's not go there, man. Joe's a retired retired police officer. You know, I, I got nothing against police officers. I, the only people that have something against police officers are people that are doing things wrong. And I, I do shit. I do shit that's against the law, and I still don't have anything against the cops. If, if you don't fuck with the cops, they're not going to fuck with you. Police only fuck with people, that, in my experience, people that deserve to be fucked with. And I've said it before that, you know, especially with this virus shit going on, this if shit turns into chaos, the police... With the help of the bikers and the truckers, could could really fucking we could shut some shit down. Imagine if 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 every cop had a couple truckers on CB and every trucker had had fucking like six bikers on Harleys. Imagine that. You got a cop, a couple semis, and a handful of fucking bikers. Fuck with us. I mean, I, you're not. If we want to block something, you know, the police will. All right, block off this entrance. Block off this exit ramp. The truckers got the blocking power, and the bikers got the fucking muscle. And not to say that the truckers don't have muscle. I mean, um, obviously, I'm covering up right now because I'm I'm in, in bulking season. I'm not getting cut till my next show. So that um, yeah, I don't have a problem with the police. So be careful who you call a fucking pedo, because that's serious, man. That's like calling someone a wife beater. You know, there's just, we don't cross certain lines. I, I joke around in the bedroom, I have some very hard limits. Other than these hard limits, I'm up for anything. It's it's kind of funny, my, my limits are so ridiculous. I always say, um, no blood, no poop, no children, and no fucking farm animals. Other than that, I'm up for anything. And obviously I'm joking around. You notice I throw no children in there. And that's serious as a heart attack, and no barnyard animals, and no poop, and no blood. Those are my firm limits in the bedroom. No blood, no poop, no children, no barnyard animals. 
if someone called me a pedo, I'd want to fucking jack him in the fucking face. And now this, this Mack truck is backpedaling a little bit, trying to fucking play up that he's a member of the Crips. I look through his pictures. Some of his pictures, he's wearing some red. If he was a real Crip, he would not own anything red, because that's the Bloods. Bloods and Crips. If his homeboys caught him wearing something red, his own homeboys would beat his ass. So I think he's lying about being a Crip. Because otherwise he would be constantly dressed like a blueberry like me. That's the way they roll. And the bloods wear all red. So I think he's fucking, I think he's talking shit. And he better be careful because if you claim to be in a fucking gang that you're not in a gang, that's the easiest way to get your ass kicked. He's turned into a clown. What is that thing he's wearing on his head? You know, the guy was bald as fuck. Now you see him and he's got a nice head of fucking hair. Looks like a fucking animal crawled up on top of his head and fucking died. What what the fuck is that wig he's wearing? Are we supposed to take that seriously, Mac Truck? That's not your hair. That looks like an animal crawled on top of you and died. Looks like shit. You know, I sent him some DMs. I tried to get him to distance himself. Because you know how it is when, when, when some of these people get interviewed. A good interviewer can bait you into saying things you don't want to say. And I posted one of the DMs I sent Mac Truck. I don't think I posted the second one. The second one said, I, I really suggest you distance yourself, you know, from the comments made on that interview. So I said something to that effect. You know, I wasn't threatening him. I wasn't insulting. I was just trying to give him some suggestions of how to take a step back and defuse this situation. Well, he never got back to me. And then when I saw Joe's video came out, Joe's rebuttal video is brilliant. Go to YouTube and find the Muscle Sport Mag YouTube channel and, and watch Joe's fucking rebuttal. A Mack truck and that little triggly little fat homo guy. That little fat fuck needs his face punched. Who is that little fat turd? That's when I decided, you know what, fuck it. I threatened Order 66 this guy Sunday night. If I don't do it, the trolls are going to turn on me and start calling me a pussy. So I, I really didn't want, I, so I said, fuck it. So as soon as I saw Joe's re retaliation or rebuttal video, that's when I issued the fucking 66. I've been working on this 66 since Sunday trying to get people ready. Lord Vader 25 was supposed to make me an Order 66 video because I thought that would have been funny on posting Lord Vader on my page with an Order 66 of Mack Truck. But Jason dropped the ball and never got me the video. So that's that. K Fitness 324. You got toilet paper? These truck stops are gonna be the truck stops are gonna be the best stocked places in the in the country. I was listening to talk radio two nights ago. I, some, a lot of times I like to sleep with the radio on in my truck. I had Fox News radio on all night while I was sleeping. I heard that the ATA, which is the American Trucking Association, got fed up with these governors trying to clean those restaurants and the ATA got a hold of all these goddamn governors on Monday and said, you need to check yourself, son. You, you close down restaurants at a truck stop. How the fuck do you think you're going to get goods to your to your grocery stores in, in your in your state? Not only groceries, food, but paper products like shit paper, paper towels, you know, Lysol, all the shit people need. Who the fuck do you think delivers that? truckers do okay so the ata told the, these fucking governors you better fucking chill out and, and not even think about trying to shut down fucking truck stops truckers need fucking food you know we we don't we can't carry a, you know i got a cooler full of food and i with on ice some you know good protein on ice and then i got dry goods you know that doesn't need to be refrigerated but, you know, it's still nice to go in the truck stop and get something different once in a while. So now all the truck stops in these affected states, food is, the restaurants are all now, all now carry out only. But truck stops are going to stay open. Truckers are, I'm not going to be quarantined. I got a CDL. You ain't getting me off the streets. I'm, a, I'm an essential employee. I'm like, a, I'm like a nurse, a doctor, a fucking cop. A fireman. I'm, I'm immune. I'm an essential employee during this fucking epidemic. Big J, saving America. So, yeah, don't fuck with truckers. Don't fuck with cops. Don't fuck with firemen. Don't fuck with nurses. Don't fuck with doctors. What the fuck is wrong with some of you people? All these people are crying. Oh, my gym is closed. Here goes all my gains. Please. We could all use two weeks off from the gym, okay? You're not going to lose all your gains. Two weeks not going to the gym, all right? Here's a little suggestion. You pussies that think you're going to lose all your gains. Two weeks going to the gym. Do a shot of DECA. I did a CC of Echo Boys and a CC of DECA. 
today. I'm, I'm going to put a little force field around my muscle while the gyms are closed. With Equipoise and DECA. Yeah, and anybody who goes off their cycle the next two weeks while gyms are closed is stupid. Absolutely stupid. This is when you want to stay on your cycle and not shrink like everybody else. I will I will tell you one thing I am going to do. I'm currently um, taking test, Equipoise, and DECA, three injectables. I might decrease my test a little bit the next 15 days while I can't train. Like, if I decrease my test to... Um, TRT levels, one cc a test a week because I'm not hitting the gym, but I'm going to maintain my DECA and my equipoise. That's what I suggest you do. If you are a gear monkey, I hope some of you are because gear monkeys are my favorite people. You're not. If you're not going to train the next day, two weeks, cut your test back to TRT levels, okay? One cc a week, but keep your anabolics at your normal level. Just because you cut your test to 250 a week. You don't have to cut your DECA or your Equipoise or your Prima Bowl in a 250 a week. You want to, these, these two weeks while food and fucking gym time is fucking scarce, you actually want to keep your anabolics high, especially if you got some Primo. I'll tell you, Primo is the best. It's saving muscle when you're on a calorie deficit. People don't talk about that a lot nowadays. Back in the day, the late 80s, Primo was known for that because we used to eat those um, Prima Bolin 50 milligram tabs. They used to make an oral Prima Bolin in a 50 milligram pill. They were just the bomb. And they were known as being the best at saving your muscle while you were cutting. I don't think Big Lou would stoop to using a, f a, a fucking fake account. You guys, you guys can fucking screenshot this little clip right here and send it to Lou. Lou's a man. I have no problem with Lou. And I think Lou is too fucking good to create a troll account to just try and troll me. Lou's got better things to do. Whoever has it, it, got you guys thinking Lou is fucking got a fake account to troll me, you're getting some bad information. Because Lou's got more important things to do. And Lou and I don't have a problem. <sighs> Don't try and create some drama between me and Lou that isn't there. I have zero confidence that Lou has a fake account for the sake of trolling me. Didn't he have you fooled last time? I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I've never known Lou to have a fake account. It'd be like Lenny having a fake account. Lenny doesn't have time for that shit. Brad doesn't have a fake account. Andrew doesn't have a fake account. My Detroit Diesel account is not a fake account. I'm open about it that that's my second account. That's my backup account. In case this one's ever gets nuked. How's Lenny doing? You know, I don't want to talk anything personal about Lenny right now. I'll just tell you he's fine and he's safe and he's healthy. You know, I don't think where Lenny works is open right now. And I don't think where Lenny trains is open right now. They need to get that squat rack, J Masters power rack, set up up at fucking Bradford Manor. That could be what saves Lenny and Brad is the J Masters power rack. You guys should put the pressure on Brad to get that power rack set up at Bradford Manor and have Lenny up for some training videos during this quarantine. That That's what the fans need. The fans need to see that Lenny and Brad are training in the garage and everything's going to be okay. K Fitness 324, I'm going to address that. Hold on, who's this jacked exterminator? Dude, Mack Truck would knock out any of the misfits. Hey, jacked exterminator, I want to ask you, how tall is that guy? Because to me, he looks like Kevin Hart on steroids, but that's just me. Anyway, back to K Fitness 324. Forget what we were talking about. Oh, coronavirus. I think I could have had it like five, six weeks ago when I had a little fever. I had a fucking fever, and I felt like shit, and I, I, I went to bed with my sweats on. Mack truck is not 5'11". I went to bed with my sweats on, and I covered myself in blankets, and I was freezing, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and I was just drenched in sweat because my fever had broken, and I was hot as fuck. And then I had a cough for like a week or two. This was, um, this, this had to have been six weeks ago. I could have had the coronavirus already. I'm not scared, dude. The flu is all about battling your fever. Once you win the, the war against the fever, you feel a shit ton better. Even if you're still sick, take some Tylenol, take some, uh, take some Advil whatever, or aspirin, whatever you like to take to cure a fever, drink plenty of fluids, bundle up, Get under a bunch of fucking blankets, sip on fluids, break the motherfucking fever. Yeah, you're still going to be sick, but once you break that fever, you're going to feel a hundred times better. Quit being, everyone needs to quit being a bitch. 
fuck. Before you fucking losers started getting the flu vaccine every year, I used to get the flu once a year every year, my whole life. God, in Michigan, the flu virus would come through town and everybody got the flu once a year. The flu don't scare me. And yeah, it's uncomfortable. Nobody likes throwing up or having diarrhea. But this last flu I had, I didn't get any throwing up or diarrhea. It was just a fever and then a cough. That's a lower respiratory flu which sounds a whole lot like coronavirus. So I could have already had it. Uh, I'll take a lower respiratory flu any day of the week over an intestinal flu where you're puking and shitting and sometimes both at the same time. Ugh. You, you ever you ever been you ever had the flu so bad you're sitting on the shitter shitting and you got to throw up so you turn your head and you throw up into the tub and then you're sitting there diarrhea drizzling out of your butt there's your puke in the goddamn bathtub David and CISO don't type in all capital letters makes you seem un uneducated the comments on the video where Dale bursts Blackstone Labs are hilarious everybody roasting Dale saying he's short and has imaginary lat syndrome and trying too hard, laughing my ass off. I haven't seen it. Brown water, yeah. Dude, Mack truck is not 5'11". There's a picture of him standing there with that short kid, that little fat boy that interviewed him, and he's got to be at least four inches shorter than that little turd that interviewed him. Oh, I sniffled. I have the, I have the coronavirus. Greetings from Bulgaria. I own a W900. I don't know what that is. Mac looks like he's 5'8". Yeah, it's probably about right. They give out IFBB Pro Cards to anybody these days. It doesn't mean shit. 5'6", 260 is still dangerous. Short fuck could take anyone's knees out. Oh, Jesus. Maybe if he was running the ball like Barry Sanders. Short little bodybuilders, no matter how big they are, are not dangerous. We can all agree, Lee Priest, at his biggest, even though he didn't weigh shit was huge but dude imagine lee priest trying to bum rush big j at six feet tall all you gotta do put out your hand out and hit him in the fucking forehead these these short people are not dangerous that's why most short people don't talk shit i'll take on any short bodybuilder before i go fucking throwing hands with some dude six four yeah some skinny dude six four two twenty i don't want to walk into those those punches come on man get real oh jesus you've obviously never trained in a gym with an amazing short fighter give me a break mike tyson wasn't that short Mike Tyson was what, 5'10", 220? Mike Tyson was a big dude. You guys all know 99% of fights wind up on the ground within the first 10 seconds, so the wrestler usually wins. Oh, don't talk shit about Dale. I wrestled enough in high school. I wound up quitting. How do you get your hair to look like mine? Lots of master on. DHT, bruh. Hey, Crystal, what's up? Why are gyms closed in Canada? Canada shouldn't have a problem with this coronavirus, with the exception of Vancouver and Toronto, where all the non-whites live. Oops, did I say that? Uh, did I just say that out loud? I don't like Slipknot. I gotta take a piss. I want to see Big J's cock. Oh, fuck. I just, I just pissed myself a little bit. Ugh. So what are we going to do about this Mack truck guy? Are we going to find his YouTube channel and just fucking force him to shut comments down? That wasn't good. I just pissed all down my goddamn leg. Good thing the bars are closed. I'm actually going to get ripped in the next 15 days. Even though the gyms are closed, you got to remember the bars are closed. So I'm just going to keep shooting the same amount of steroids, but I won't be able to get in the bar. So therefore, I'll get leaner. It's a brilliant plan. What I talked about earlier, don't abandon your cycle. Just cut your testosterone down to TRT levels, you know, like 200 to 300 migs a week. Keep your testosterone stable. Don't abandon your anabolics. That's what's going to put a force field around your muscle to keep it. Let's just say, for example, you're a novice bodybuilder. You were doing 500 test, 500 equipoise. Okay, I'm just going to use these real simple numbers as an example. You're doing 500 test, 500 equipoise. That was your cycle. Or 500 test, 500 deca. I don't care. What I'm saying to do, cut the test to 250 the next two weeks because you're not going to be training. So why waste the test? Keep it in your in your pocket. Don't 
don't back off the equipoise or the deca. If I was doing one of those cycles, I would, I would, I would, I would just go 250 test 500 EQ or 250 test 500 deca, whatever, vice versa. You get my point. Because if you're not going to train, you don't need all that test. You'll just have more test left over when the gyms open back up. But you don't want to back down off your anabolics. That's what's going to put a force field around your muscle. So that if you're not training, you're not going to lose any kind of muscle. Isn't the test easier to come by than the other compounds? That's a good point. That's a real good point. Yeah, but if you're on a test or DECA cycle, you want to be a fucking Jew, come off the test or DECA to save your test and DECA. I mean, your EQ and DECA. For when the gym opens back up. By the time the gyms open back up in, in two weeks, even if you start pinning the day the gym opens back up, it's going to take so long for that shit to get back in you. I understand what some of you guys are saying, but it doesn't mean I, I agree with it. I understand it. Testosterone is what gives you the desire to train and your aggression, your desire to hit a heavier set, your desire to get nasty. The EQ or the DECA, what you're stacking with it, is what helps you build tissue and recover and all that real good stuff. I would personally hoard the testosterone not worry about the anabolic because if the gyms are going to open up again in 15 days it doesn't make sense to go off eq or deca because they take so long to get in your system anyway whereas test gets in your system pretty damn fast you can decrease your test save some gear once the gyms go open back up pin the two cc the minute you find out the gym is open, pin two cc's a test. Trust me, you'll be ready to rock and roll the next morning. It doesn't work that way with EQ or DECA. EQ or DECA are more about time. You guys that are on a budget, yeah, maybe you could cut the test and the DECA down to one cc a week. Maybe you want to do a big J cruise right now, which is like one cc a test, one cc of EQ. Then when the gyms open back up, you know, you go back to two cc's a test and two cc's of EQ. I don't like the idea of dropping the anabolic. If, if the gym's only going to be closed for two weeks and you're mid-cycle, I just don't see the advantage of cutting your anabolic right now. Sure, cut the test, but keep it at TRT level. I'm sure there's people that are smarter than me and know more about this than me. This is just my opinion. I, I would hoard my test right now, and I would continue pinning the anabolics like you, you, you know you're going to get more later. Conserve your test like you're in a zombie apocalypse. There's a good example. I'm going to sum it up in a zombie apocalypse way. Hoard your test like you're in a zombie apocalypse right now. But keep, keep fucking pinning your anabolics like you're partying like it's 1999. That's the big J theory on all this. With your test, pretend you're in a zombie apocalypse. Go back to just one cc a week. But with your anabolics, party like it's 1999. We want drunken racism and hatred towards friends. You know, I've been wanting to talk about Brad for a while now. That Brad. Well, Brad's a great guy. I hate to sound like Hamburg, but that Brad is a really good guy. I really like Brad. You guys don't understand, and I love Lenny to death, too. But I want you guys to... And I'm not putting down Brad or Lenny or any of the other misfits. I wanted you guys to know something. Me and Andrew are thick as thieves. Like, Andrew, I don't know how to explain this. Like, I'm involved in several group texts, misfit-related nonsense. I talk to Lenny private, I talk to Brad private, and I talk to Andrew private. And it's hard for me to say this without you guys taking it the wrong way. So I'm, I'm going to say it like where Big Rob said it. Andrew is my mentor. He took the time to listen to me, talk to me, and I highly recommend you follow Andrew of the Delray Misfits. But all joking aside, I'm, I'm telling you, me and Andrew are thick as thieves. The Delray Misfits are my best friends. Andrew and I have a, 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 a much different relationship than me and Brad or me and Lenny. Again, I... I I don't want to, I don't know how to say this. Like, I'm just going to say it. Andrew and I can have intelligent conversations. Okay. Whereas like Brad is like, oh, you pussy, rub some dirt on it. Uh, have a beer, you pussy. That shit gets old. Lenny, I love Lenny to death. I really haven't had any in-depth talks with Lenny in probably two years. I haven't really sat down with Lenny 
and had any long talks with Lenny in probably over two years. So nothing against Lenny. That video, Brad's house, Bradford Manor, everyone could call it Bard Estates. That's so stupid. It's Bradford Manor. That night we had at Bradford Manor was, was, it, that was good times. That was genuine. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Even having Jason there was okay. I'll tell you what, having Jason in person is much better than it appears on video. I watched, I watched the videos. <clears throat> the parts of Jason on video are just so cringy. Like, ugh, I can't believe he has fans. But Jason's not that bad in real life. We had a good time. We need that power rack at Bradford Estates put back together. Brad needs to stop being so fucking, not lazy, but he needs to get his priorities in check and put that power rack together. And he's got to do it right because there's a chin-up bar on that power rack. I tried to explain it to Brad that night. Those cross members that tie the power rack together, you got to do it the right way. Otherwise, the chin-up bar won't work. Who's winning in a fight, Brad or Lenny? I, w I would say Brad because Brad could just punch him in the face once and run away. Punching Lenny would be like having Shrek chase you. Thoughts on the Taco Queen. Valerie is an incredible person. Valerie impressed me like a motherfucker that my night out there at Bradford Manor. She didn't take part in any. The, she's just busy like doing home improvements, taking shit from Brad, cooking for his friends. Valerie is a keep. I like Valerie. So now it's just up to them to make it work, you know what I mean? Like, six months from now, you know, if Valerie's still trying to, you know, occupy her time fucking painting cabinets, Valerie's great. When I saw Valerie hug Lenny, I knew, I knew she was kind of a cool chick, because, like, who in the fuck would come running up to this creepy guy who could be infected with HIV or hepatitis and hug him and jump on him and love him. Valerie gets two thumbs up from Dick J Masters. All right, we got to wrap this up. Got 10 seconds remaining. Keep your powder dry.